here's your wrestling news for October 21st, 2021. And your headlines for today include, multiple top WWE superstars took private jets to Saudi Arabia for crown jewel event, Tony Khan responds and roasts Eric Bischoff, The Undertaker in Saudi Arabia ahead of WWE crown jewel, major update on hacksaw Jim Duggan after an emergency surgery, MJF claims he has better mic and in-ring skills than Roman Reigns, JC Jane update following bad bump on WWE NXT, I don't think he's donating anything. Wrestling veteran dismisses Mustafa Ali's claim of donating his earnings to charity. Booker T responds to criticism over Queen's Crown Tournament match duration. Jim Ross furious about rumors that he drinks during AEW Dynamite tapings. Karrion Cross looks almost unrecognizable after changing his look. Former WWE star says he will never speak to Vince McMahon again. The Inspiration discuss why they signed with Impact Wrestling and more. We are kicking off today with Crown Jewel. WWE's return to Saudi Arabia has been a long time coming after having to miss over a year of events in the Middle East. According to a source who spoke to Ringside News, a few big names at the show opted for private jets, allowing them to travel to Riyadh in comfort and style. Vince McMahon and Brock Lesnar both took private jets, as is the norm with these two big names, but it's also said that Roman Reigns traveled in his own jet, alongside his special counsel Paul Heyman and the Usos. As for the rest of the roster, they traveled together in a chartered flight that included a two-hour layover in London, England, and we can only hope that the trip back is a lot easier than the alleged hostage situation after 2019's Crown Jewel event. AEW now, as since the company was founded, the roster and Tony Khan have never shied away from attacking WWE. From segments on TV and being the elite, interviews, and tweets, AEW can't get enough of talking about their competition, which has earned the company some negative comments of their own. On his 83 Weeks podcast, Eric Bischoff said that Tony Khan should keep quiet about WWE, saying that comparing yourself to the biggest name in town without actually going directly head-to-head -head with their flagship programming is only causing AEW more problems. Responding on Busted Open Radio, Khan didn't hold back, accusing Bischoff of being a hypocrite given his own actions during the Monday Night Wars. He said, I was amused by Eric's comments. I like Eric when we're together, but this is the ultimate example of glass houses, knowing how Eric conducted himself when he was the president of WCW, and he did ask for the head-to-head -head competition. He said publicly I should be going to that, but I don't decide when these shows are on. This time slot, we looked at a couple of different slots, and this was the one they thought would do well, and I was supportive because it allowed for a good block of wrestling on Friday night, and I knew there would be a good amount of people watching on Friday, and it was effectively an opportunity for people to watch everything in one night. During the Monday Night Wars, Bischoff never shied away from bringing up WWF programming, even offering Vince McMahon money to fight him on WCW TV. But after 20 years of WCW being dead and buried, the former Raw general manager isn't too keen on companies attacking each other anymore. Earlier this week, we reported on The Undertaker and refuted the rumor that he would be competing at Crown Jewel. This rumor spread after a video was shared promoting the Phenom, but that video was for one of WWE's prior Saudi events. It now turns out that the Phenom did make the trip to the Middle East, taking a private jet with WWE veteran Fit Finley, but he hasn't gone to wrestle. Instead, the dead man was on hand to introduce Pitbull at the 2021 Riyadh Seasonal Festival, which is very close to the Muhammad Abdu Arena where Crown Jewel is taking place. It's not impossible that the dead man could appear at Crown Jewel, though we imagine WWE would have advertised him beforehand if that was the case, and we'll only know for sure when Crown Jewel ends later today. We've got news from Jim Duggan now as the Hall of Famer has been hospitalized this week. On Facebook, Duggan's wife Deborah posted the sad news with a photo of her husband resting on his side in a hospital bed and said that Jim was in to have emergency surgery and asked fans for their prayers. In an update, it seems the surgery was a success as Deborah posted a much more flattering picture of her husband, who was seen giving his trademark thumbs up to the camera. It's unknown if this latest hospital trip is connected to the severe infection that hospitalized him last month, his 2019 heart surgery, or a different matter altogether, but we're sending our best wishes to Jim and Deborah at this time. Now, MJF is considered one of the very best heels in modern day wrestling, thanks in part for his refusal to break character. 
Ironically, MJF's heel antics have made him a popular name amongst fans of AEW, but this week, the salt of the earth found an incredible way to get even those who cheer him hating him. Speaking to the Wrestling Podcast, MJF discussed Roman Reigns and acknowledged the Tribal Chief, but said that he's the better star on the mic. He explained, I think Roman Reigns is a hell of a performer, he really is. I think he's absolutely incredible. Am I better than him on the mic and in the ring? Sure, but I'm not going to go out of my way and talk about him because I respect him. I respect what he does. I respect the hard work that goes into putting out that product that is WWE. After Reign's recent comments about AEW and saying CM Punk has lost a step, praising the head of the table is arguably the best way for MJF to get heel heat with AEW's passionate fan base. MJF went on to say that he may one day work for WWE, and the idea of a Reigns MJF feud is certainly an enticing one, though fans will have to wait a long time for that to happen, as both men are being booked incredibly well in their respective companies. On this week's NXT 2.0, JC Jane competed against Io Shirai in Persia Parada in a match that went horribly wrong. During an attempted suicide dive, the Toxic Attraction member didn't get enough speed and her feet got caught in the ropes, causing her to land bad on her head at ringside. Jane was helped to the back as the match continued, and we now have an update on her condition. On Wrestling Observer Live, it was reported that she underwent a full CT scan and passed the test, which could be a sign that she didn't suffer a concussion on this bump. Jane's scan was described as okay and clean, but there's still no word on if she'll miss any ring time or miss next week's Halloween Havoc event where she and Gigi Dolan are meant to be in the triple threat tag team ladder match for the NXT women's tag team titles. Neither Jane, Dolan, nor their teammate Mandy Rose have commented publicly on the injury, nor has WWE offered an official update, as everyone is keeping quiet after this nasty botch. At Crown Jewel, Mustafa Ali will face hometown hero Mansoor, but the former Retribution member won't make a penny for the match. Instead, Ali has said he'll donate his entire earnings from the Saudi show to charity, a noble gesture, but not everyone is buying it. Speaking to Sports Kita Wrestling, Kenny Bolin said he doesn't believe Ali is donating any money, as he doesn't believe anyone will get paid a specific amount for the show, and that any earnings are from their contracted pay. Bolin cited inside information as his source, though it's just as likely that Ali could donate whatever he would be paid for the show out of his own pocket. Whatever the case, Ali is looking to be the first man to defeat Mansoor in the latter's homeland of Saudi Arabia, and we'll have to see if the Retribution member can do what the likes of Dolph Ziggler and Cesaro couldn't do years ago. More from NXT 2.0 as Carmelo Hayes has been on a roll this year, winning the Breakout Star Tournament this past August. Hayes cashed in his guaranteed title shot from the tournament to become North American champion, but that would have never happened had Tony Khan got his way. Speaking to Daily DDT, Hayes said he came to WWE after considering offers and opportunities being made by other promotions. The North American champion didn't state what other company made a play for him, but said he considered offers from the top two companies, which would presumably be WWE and AEW. At 27 years old, Hayes has years ahead of him in wrestling, and although several names have chosen to jump from WWE to AEW's roster, there's still those who'd prefer to work for what remains the biggest promotion in all of pro wrestling. At Crown Jewel, either Zelina Vega or Dewdrop will be crowned the first Queen's Crown winner in the finals of the incredibly tone-deaf tournament. Despite WWE championing themselves as bastions of equality and is six years into the women's revolution, this historic tournament has seen less than 14 minutes of TV time, with no first round or semi-finals match going longer than three minutes. Fans have been outraged over how little time the Queen's Crown Tournament has received, but Booker T is on WWE's side of this. Speaking on his podcast, Booker addressed the short tournament, comparing it to his victory in the 2006 King of the Ring. People may not remember, I think I had two matches and I won the King of the Ring tournament. The King of the Ring tournament is not about the tournament, it's about crowning a king. Booker added that fans don't remember his wins in the 2006 tournament, but remember his time as King Booker. And we can only hope that either Vega or Dewdrop have a great run as queen after this underwhelming first Queen's Crown tournament. More from AEW, and although Jim Ross is considered by many as the greatest commentator of all time, his performance over the past few years has often been subpar. 
from calling AEW's flagship show WWE Dynamite to calling Kenny Omega the WWE Champion, JR has had his fair share of mistakes and has faced backlash by the fans, a response that has taken Cody Rhodes by surprise. There's even been a rumor that JR's mistakes have been down to him drinking on the job, a claim that the Oklahoman furiously denied on his latest Grilling JR podcast. Somebody wrote on Twitter the other day as if they knew that I drink a lot of Crown Royal during the broadcasts. That's so f ridiculous. You want to say that? I feel sorry for you that you would imagine that happening. If I could rebuke that stupid f***ing rumor, it's ridiculous. JR worked for decades in WWE before he was fired in 2013 for being intoxicated at a 2K panel during SummerSlam week. JR was quick to refute the rumor that he drinks during tapings and doesn't care what his haters have to say, but that doesn't mean he's happy with the mistakes he's made on AEW programming. In the Attitude Era, Vince Russo served as head writer for the WWF before leaving for WCW in late 1999. Though he earned the WWF some of its highest ratings ever, Russo's WCW run was a colossal failure, but the controversial writer hasn't left wrestling entirely. Russo has even taken part in some WWE-produced documentaries, but it appears there'll be no more work between him and WWE, as he tweeted this week, After knowing Vince McMahon for 30 years and having great success with him during my time at WWE, yesterday, he and I had our final exchange. It's an unfortunate story and sad in many ways, but closure is good. Not ready to discuss now, but I will be. Where? Russo seems genuinely upset that his longtime relationship with McMahon is over, and although a full-time return to the WWE always seemed highly unlikely for the former Vic Venom, it definitely won't be happening now. Back to WWE and Karrion Cross has undergone a lot of changes since coming to Raw earlier this year, with more changes expected in the coming future. Joining Raw without Scarlett and with new gear, it's been reported that Cross's entrance will soon change, and he'll be portraying a character who's more like a psycho, yet still calm and cool. That's not all that's changed, as on Instagram, Cross shared a series of photos in which he's grown out his hair and looks unrecognizable to the star fans last saw compete on the October 10th Raw. Fans were shocked with Cross's dramatic transformation, with comparisons being made to Randy Orton and Chris Hemsworth, whilst others said that the well-dressed former NXT champion could be the next James Bond. There's no word on when Cross's new character will make it to TV, but judging by these photos, the former NXT champion will have a brand new, unrecognizable look on Raw very soon. And we're ending today with Impact Wrestling, which will host its annual Bound for Glory event this week, in which the Inspiration will make their in-ring debut. The former Iconics, the pair of Jesse McKay and Cassie Lee, were released back in April and will challenge Jessica Havoc and Rosemary for the knockout tag team titles. Speaking on Busted Open Radio, McKay, formerly Billy Kay, explained that Impact's amazing tag team division, and hearing nothing but incredible things about Impact, won them over. Cassie Lee added that they feel honored to be a part of the Knockouts division, which they consider the best women's division in wrestling. Time will tell whether the inspiration become the Knockouts tag team champions this Saturday, but after their split in WWE last year, the pair are happy to be teaming again. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.